It's February 12th, 2014, and this is a 40 and Slip News special report. <music> News coming out of Humboldt County in California. The Finding Bigfoot crew did their last show. The no! season finale, if you will. Or no, the series finale, if you will. Say it's not so. Oh, yeah. And I'm not Lawrence Fishburne, Matt. Any, anything but that. Why well, didn't... Yeah, that's an <laughs> entirely different subject. <laughs> We're going to segue into that for just a second. <laughs> like, I want to understand why the motherfucker apologized to Sam Jackson when he meant the fucking Winter Soldier trailer and then forgot. Yeah. It's like, okay, so yes, there was a commercial in the Super Bowl with Sam Jackson, but he's going to take it the Lawrence Fishburne route. And I'm also going to say The Matrix would have been a completely different set of movies with Sam Jackson. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Sammy Jack should have thrown a motherfucker in there, though. Take the red pill, motherfucker! (laughs) I ain't fish burn, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> oh, that was great. But anyway, yeah, finding Bigfoot. We are, we are San Steve tonight. Steve could not make it to be here with us. He's, Actually, he's here. He's just being really quiet. Uh, you might hear him scream. He's having his circumcision. Yes. Um. But yeah, finding Bigfoot filmed their last episode in Humboldt County. Um. I personally. I, I've seen the show. I can say I've seen the show. <laughs> well, um, good. Glad you caught it. Yeah, I I have seen it, I, I, and I have met the folks on the show. You have. Yes, I have. During um, the uh, little publicity stop at the uh, Bigfoot Museum. The Bigfoot Museum. Um, they had the little meet and greet where they signed and took pictures with everybody and. Um, I, I, I like what the show did for the field of quote unquote bigfooting, I guess you could say. Um, I like the awareness that it brought out. I, I'm not a fan of the bigfoot facts. No. Or no. the um uh the made but I up, guess the made up shit that uh, moneymaker says. <laughs> Perhaps if they had called it bullshit. It would have been a little too much for a primetime television. Yeah. Uh, so they just called it Bigfoot Facts. And they had Penn and Teller to do the other show. True. So. I, I, Which I, pulled that prank on Matt Moneymaker, just for the record. <laughs> um. <laughs> I, I, I personally, the, the show to me, like I said, it, it was great for awareness, I guess. But. I'm not the biggest fan of the show itself. I agree. It did great for getting the Bigfoot research uh, out in the public eye where they know that it's going on and there's people out there that do this stuff. But at the same time, I don't really agree with um, 100% of their tactics that they would use or the things that they would say. Or the fact that now we have random soccer moms going out into the woods doing tree knocks. But yeah, hey, it, I, I it mean, did get the word out. Because at this point, and I'm reminded of a story that I read um, a long... Uh, oh God, it was like over a year and a half ago now. So, I, God, I don't know how old the story itself is. But it's of a guy who decided to go squatching with some people... And they were uh, blasting calls, and they were getting responses, and they were moving closer, and the sound seemed to be moving closer. And come to find out, it was another group of squatchers. Yeah. You know, and I think that a lot of what you're seeing out there is people hearing other people, um, and not a lot of legitimate research going on. But at the same time, like I said, awareness, you know... uh, just interest in the field with people that normally probably wouldn't have had interest in it. Great, great stuff. Oh, the internet community has grown twice as large, if not more, just from the series being on. Right. Um, but, I, I mean, and I'm not 
I've never made no bones about it. I'm not the biggest fan of half of the cast of the show. Um, I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I consider myself a pretty good judge of character. Um, in when I meet people, <laughs> even though I'm on the show. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, when I meet people, I, I, I usually can tell. And I, I, like I said, I met all four of them, and Cliff and Renee could not be nicer people when you meet them. Um, I had talked to Cliff before on Jeff's podcast when I was uh, co-hosting that. Oh, God, that was almost a year ago now. That would be the Squatcher's Lounge podcast? The Squatcher's Lounge podcast. Um, but, you know, and Cliff... You know, once I had mentioned it to him, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember you. And just a really nice guy, and Renee was really nice. Um, and I've been one of the people out there who said she's the fucking manliest one on the show, but I'll tell you, she looks a lot better in person. She <laughs> is a, a very beautiful woman. Um, and But Moneymaker and Bobo just come off like dicks. They, I, I, Moneymaker, when he walked in... His entrance could have been akin to the Roadrunner. From where he was on the road to the table. Like, he blew by everybody. And just went in and sat down. Bobo... He has to avoid the paparazzi. Bobo comes in with a fucking entourage of two Hawaiian guys. One of them with a fucking ukulele. And they're all sporting the same surf shop shirts. Oh, well, sure. It just, to me, just, oh, God. I mean, I'm, I'm a publicity whore. Not a real depiction a of whore, but research. Yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, I. Well, I'm kind of curious as to what they're all going to do now. I'm not. I mean, you know, the ride's over, so do they go back to their old jobs and... Uh, Moneymaker goes back to triumphantly leading the BFRO and being another just regular researcher. We shall see. I guess that is the question of the day. Where does it go from here? I mean, we still got a good, you know, fall season left. Oh so yeah, they're, and they're, they're gonna they're gonna pound the shit out of that. I mean, yeah, I mean, wise. The, the, I, I'm pretty sure they still have. Did they do the meet and greet up here in Maine? I don't know if they did. I had heard word that they were going to at the at the um, uh, uh, Lauren Coleman's place, to which I've never um, been. Yeah, I I don't know if they did or not. To be honest, um, I don't recall it. Yeah, I don't recall hearing anything about. But I do know there were some rumors spreading already of possible independent little special one-offs using various cast members at various times. So you might see like a Bigfoot special with Cliff and Bobo or something. Touched by Bigfoot. Touched by Bigfoot. The Matt after Moneymaker sc- story. after school special. <laughs> Learn how Matt had a secret he had to keep. So I guess we'll stay tuned. Well, some people will. I'll be ignorantly unaware and blissfully unaware, and because but I, hey, I don't uh, have television. If I want to watch Finding Bigfoot, <laughs> I had to watch it on like fucking Netflix when it finally got on there. Well, this week is also the end of Bigfoot Bounty, so the Bigfoot shows are kind of coming to an end. But uh, History Channel. February 24th, I believe, launches their new series, Cryptid. Cryptid. Um, Cryptid. And the first episode is something about the Swamp Beast, whatever the Swamp Beast is. Yeah. Looks kind of reenactment orientated. I well, don't know they, if they it's going to be fictional. They need to do or... something different. Um, I mean, Monster Quest, I watched it. And, yeah. And... and and to be honest, I enjoyed it as much as I beat the shit out of it because it gave me something to watch that right. I could sit through. Um, 
but you know, give me something that I can sit down and watch, and I'll watch it. I guess is what I, you know. My my take on it. it. The the reality style TV shows I just can't do. I can't do them. Well, to be honest, I mean, in the field of cryptozoology, you never find anything. And if you do, it's something small that's a really big deal to you, but wouldn't be a big deal to somebody else. And it takes like a year of hard work and dedication to find it. Oh, you mean like so, in their little three-day stints, they're not going to find anything? Uh, right. I mean, you might run across a couple of prints or something over the course of a year. Um, it, you know, and that's not a guarantee. So these shows, I, mean, I don't know, at least on like Gold Rush and shows like that, at least they find gold sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's yeah, enough exactly. to keep the audience interested. Ice so road I, truckers, I, there is ice and <laughs> there's ice and on there the road trucks. and they are trucking. Yeah. Uh, you know? Absolutely. Uh so well I guess on that note we'll uh we'll stay tuned and keep you know, look on the horizon, see what's out there for new shows, but until then